The Forex trader, it's important to know some basic definitions both to understand the currency markets and to help define your strategy. This brief video describes what a currency pair is, who the Forex market participants are, why the Forex market is an OTC or over-the-counter market, and what liquidity means there. When you trade Forex, you trade one currency for another. Forex markets enable you to trade any two currencies in the world. The currency pairs traded most often are called the major currency pairs. Other currency pairs are called minor or emerging currency pairs. When you and your fellow Forex traders buy and sell currencies, you create opportunities for other Forex traders to sell and buy. Forex traders include individual traders as well as companies, financial institutions such as pension funds, hedge funds and brokers, and banks. The motivations of the market participants vary. Individual traders trade for profit. Manufacturing companies may wish to protect physical investments by hedging. Financial institutions may also hedge or simply invest. And central banks may wish to affect prices and trade volume. For example, if a national bank wants to weaken its currency so the country remains competitive for exporting goods and services, it may buy foreign currencies against its own currency. Foreign exchange transactions are not performed on any central exchange, but are conducted mainly bilaterally between market participants over the counter OTC. These Forex transactions are facilitated mainly through trading platforms, enabling buyers and sellers to see real-time bids and offers for multiple currency pairs. The ease of transacting something at the desired price and volume when you want to is called liquidity. Some currency pairs are traded a lot and are said to have good liquidity because any given trade does not really affect the price. Other currency pairs are traded less and typically have less liquidity. Several factors affect liquidity, but fundamentally it's about traders being able to buy or sell what they want, when they want to, and at what price. This comes down to pricing and volume. Other factors such as geopolitical events, economic news and certain participants can also affect volume or pricing and thus liquidity. As an example of how an event might affect liquidity, if laws are passed that are thought detrimental to a country's international trade, Forex traders might sell the currency. This may result in a very high liquidity market with a high volume of trades, but it could also trigger a low liquidity situation if participants are reluctant to buy the currency expecting further decline. We will revisit liquidity in a different video when we talk about pricing. This concludes the overview of currency pairs, market participants and the concepts of over-the-counter market and liquidity. Currency. When you trade Forex, you trade one currency for another. Since their value is rarely one to one, the currency amounts are different. This reflects the exchange rate. Any two currencies involved in a Forex trade are called a currency pair. The value of the first currency, the base currency, is shown in terms of the other currency. The base currency is what you buy or sell and the quote currency shows how much you will pay or receive. For example, say you want to sell 10,000 euro for some US dollars. Your trading platform will show the currency pair and the price. The price is the amount of the quote currency that you will receive when you sell 10,000 of the base currency. Forex markets enable you to trade any two currencies in the world. The currency pairs traded most often are called the major currency pairs. Other currency pairs are called minor or emerging currency pairs. In trading, profit is made by buying low and selling high, and that happens in Forex too. The difference between the buy price and the sell price is called the spread. The spread is measured not in whole dollars or pounds, but in so-called pips. This is the smallest possible price change on most trading platforms. For most currency pairs, this is the fourth number after the decimal point. The monetary value of each pip depends on three factors – the currency pair being traded, the size of the trade, and the exchange rate. A very liquid currency pair often has tight spreads of only a few pips, whereas less liquid currencies have larger spreads. 
Since the profit or loss is so small for each currency unit traded, many trades are very large. For example, say that you believe that the euro will rise. If you buy 1,000 euro by selling US dollars and sell them again once the euro has risen 10%, you will make 110 US dollars of profit. Similarly, if you buy 1 million euros against US dollars on a 10% rise, you would make 110,000 US dollars profit. To achieve this result, traders often use margin accounts to leverage or borrow money that enables them to make such large market orders. This concludes the overview of how to trade Forex, what a currency pair is, definitions of spread and pip, and why Forex market participants use leverage. One of the most important decisions you make as a trader is choosing your broker. Let's look at three things you should consider. First, regulatory bodies enforce minimum standards for the brokers and guard the client's rights. Here are the three common regulatory bodies. Cyprus is a popular base of operations for European Forex brokers. The Cyprus Securities and Exchange Commission provides a basic regulatory framework for financial services, such as deposit protection up to €20,000. It is not as stringent as other European regulators. Given London's position as a financial hub, the Financial Conduct Authority of the United Kingdom regulates many European brokers. The FCA is stricter and offers deposit protection of up to £50,000. In addition, it requires segregated accounts for clients' funds and has rules for faster processing of withdrawals. The Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority is the Swiss government body responsible for financial regulation. Clients benefit from deposit protection up to 100,000 Swiss francs. To offer Forex services, Swiss brokers must be licensed banks, which are held to high standards of service, security and capital requirements. A handful of brokers are also publicly listed on a stock exchange. Some traders enjoy doing business with them because their finances are transparent due to their listing. Once you have considered the regulatory body of your potential brokers, the next step is to consider your own needs. For example, some brokers prescribe certain trade sizes or attach conditions to them. Ensure that your broker enables you to make the trades you desire. You might also look at spreads since they can heavily influence transaction costs. Some brokers offer tighter spreads but apply a commission on every trade, while others add markups to spreads. A combination of both is also possible. It is important to pay attention to these different models when comparing spreads between brokers. You might even find other hidden costs, such as withdrawal fees. While checking such stipulations also ensure that the funding and withdrawal methods for your account are convenient and that there are no imposed limits that would hinder you. Traders who tend to hold positions overnight should also check the rollover policy as brokers apply different rates. In addition, some brokers or platforms restrict trading strategies, such as proscribing scalping or limiting automated trading. If you're interested in such strategies, ensure that your broker supports your preferences. The third topic to consider when selecting your trading broker is everyday interactions and services. For example, does the broker offer charting tools, a news feed and market analysis? At some point in your trading career, you will probably have a question, issue or request and you want to make sure that your broker offers prompt and reliable support. Are they available when you need them through phone, email and or live chat? Reading reviews and studying the trading conditions of potential brokers carefully will help you pick the right broker. However, the best way to ensure a broker is right for you is to test their services for yourself by opening a demo account or even a live account with minimum funding before increasing your trading equity and position sizes. Many things you notice in daily life also affect the Forex market. When people talk about mortgages, they are talking about interest rates. When companies or politicians make economic announcements, traders take note. And when news reports cover political events or natural occurrences, there may be opportunities to trade. 
such opportunities can be found in both the fundamental sense of what will happen, for example, after a change in interest rates by a central bank, and in a more psychological sense, in guessing how other traders, and thus the Forex market, will react to the information. Sometimes announcements and events have both short-term and long-term effects, and you can decide to trade one or both. Let's say you believe that in the short term, the new interest rate decided by a central bank will strengthen the domestic currency. In this case, you could buy or go long on the currency until it appreciates, and then sell it for a profit. You could also choose to sell or short the currency when the announcement is made, because you believe that other traders will sell it in the short term. There is also another way to look at interest rate changes, namely buying currencies that have high interest rates. There is in fact a word for buying high interest currencies while selling low interest currencies, namely carry trade. Because so much money is involved, only big announcements or events really move traders to move the market. This concludes an introduction to the main factors which affect the Forex market.